happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about juries and racial bias. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Mr. Theodore was charged with an offense that involved the alleged killing of two rival drug dealers. Specifically in his case, there was an issue about whether or not Mr. Theodore and the rival drug dealers were involved in indigenous street gangs. And Mr. Theodore raised the argument in the case that the jurors needed to be specifically instructed on discrimination against Indigenous people in Canada and their need to be unbiased when dealing with Indigenous people in Canada, and that the judge had a legal obligation to pre-screen jurors as part of the jury selection process to rule out anybody who might demonstrate a bias against Indigenous people, whether it was conscious or subconscious. Unfortunately, the court disagreed and Mr. Theodore sought leave to appeal his case to the Supreme Court of Canada. Of course, given that it's featured on this video series, leave was denied. Mr. Theodore's case raises obviously important issues, especially as we've seen massive reforms to the jury selection process and significant limitations on the ability of individuals to challenge potential jurors in building a jury that will hear their case. Judges should have a constitutional obligation to ensure that a jury can discharge the most essential part of its function, which is to consider the evidence in a fair and unbiased manner. And that means being free from both conscious biases as well as subconscious biases. And in order to confront one's subconscious biases, there needs to be a specific instruction given to jurors to ensure that they are aware of the significant legacy of discrimination, systemic and otherwise, against Indigenous people in Canada. For a judge not to have to discharge any obligation to an Indigenous offender or any obligation where the victim of a crime is Indigenous, and remember that victims of crime in Canada are just as disproportionately more likely to be victims of crime as they are to be offenders charged with crimes. In these circumstances, to say that a judge has no specific obligation to screen jurors for potential bias when we know that that bias exists and is widespread seems to me to be eliminating the very basic concept of a fair trial. And how can Indigenous people in this country have, co uh, have confidence in the fact that they're going to get a trial full of fair, impartial jurors who are going to look at them for something beyond the color of their skin, beyond their cultural community, and instead look at the facts of the case if there's no obligation on the court to even screen this or even alert jurors to these issues. It seems to me to be completely contradictory with all of the other jurisprudence we've seen in Canada dealing with Indigenous offenders, as well as completely contradictory to the specific requirements in the Criminal Code that require extra care to be taken when dealing with Indigenous offenders before the court. This case is, if anything, a gigantic leap backwards in correcting the historic injustices that have led to the disproportionate numbers of Indigenous people incarcerated and facing crimes today in Canada than there have been uh, in the last several years. And we do not need a great leap backward at this point in time. The Supreme Court of Canada should have taken the opportunity here at least to chime in and say why they would not have the need to do this. Take the case maybe just to say why it's not necessary for judges to pre-screen so at least we can understand the logic behind a decision like this not to hear a case like this in circumstances where we know it will likely lead to an injustice. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases that Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.